he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. One of those hot, windless days when you feel like you're being smothered in wool flannel and even the air seems stale and kind of secondhand. We were determined to find a new and shorter route to drive our cattle to the railhead. Red and I had been riding since sunup. We were hot and tired, so we decided to rest for a few minutes. Whew. I get any hotter, I'll blow up. <laughs> I'm glad we come through here, though. After it cools off, we can drive our cattle through this cutoff just like we figured. If we drive them cattle through here in this heat, by the time we get to railhead, there'll be nothing but skin and bones. <laughs> Folks will have to pay Wait us. Wait a minute. To... Huh? Listen. Well, I don't hear anything. Unless it's the sweat dripping off of these trees. You must be getting kind of... Shots! Get out or we'll blast you. Hurry it up. I've got exactly $36.22 and no jewelry. And you Matilda Heron? Yes, but I don't see how that concerns you. Our boss wants to talk to you. You must be mistaken. I don't know you or your boss. You keep away from me or I'll hit you again. Okay, lady, we'll do it the hard way. ma'am? Yes, but they shot the driver. Take a look at him, Red. I don't know who you are, but I was never so glad to see anyone in my life. My name is Cassidy. This is Red Connors. And may I suggest the next time you're in a stage holdup that you just hand your money over to them without putting up a fight? You might have been killed. But they didn't want money. They were trying to make me go with them. What? Well, I don't understand it either. I haven't been in this part of the country for years. Yet those hoodlums knew my name and said their boss wanted to see me. Their boss? This driver's unconscious, but he's still breathing. We'll get him right into the doctor at Medicine Rock. You drive the stage in. All right, young lady. Oh, my parasol. Ah, here's the rest of it. In you go. On the way, I learned her name was Matilda Heron. She was a spinster who lived in Kansas City. 
She'd never been west until two weeks ago when she set out to visit her sick brother, a teacher. She couldn't imagine why anyone would want to kidnap her. Neither could she give much description of the outlaws beyond the fact that they were masked and carried guns. There wasn't much to go on, and what there was didn't make sense. Samuel Heron's home was on the edge of town. It wasn't much of a place, but then school teachers usually aren't rich. You're all right there, Riff. There you go. Red, you take the driver on over to the doctor, then report to the sheriff. Sure. I'll meet you at his office after I talk with Mr. Heron. There you go. Come on, Mark. Well, Matilda! Oh, Samuel! What a wonderful surprise! Oh, I came as soon as I could. This is Mr. Cassidy. How are you, Mr. Harris? How do you do? Mr. Cassidy saved me from bandits. Bandits? Samuel, yes. Two men held up the stage. What are you doing out of bed? You march right back into the house. Well, you're much too ill to be standing here gabbing. Ill? Get right back into the house. I never knew a man yet who knew how to take yes, care of himself. Yes, but Maddie, I'm, I'm you all go, right. Now, you go right in there and sit down, Samuel. I'm here to take care of you. Now, Mr. Cassidy, sit down, please. I'm going to make you a cup of tea. And as soon uh, as I talk to the doctor Matilda, and get you taken Matilda, care of... Matilda, Matilda, I never felt better in all my life. Well, then why did you send me this telegram? What telegram? This one here, saying you were about to die and asking me to come at once. Why, I didn't send this. You didn't? No. Oh, there must be some mistake. Maybe it wasn't a mistake. What do you mean? The two men that held that stage up knew your sister was in there and tried to kidnap her. Kidnap? That's right. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? It's Breck. Breck? The man who murdered Sheriff Winters. Why should he send me a telegram? Because I was present at the slaying. It's my testimony that will hang him. Well, I still don't understand. Well, Breck tried to bribe me, and then tried to frighten me into changing my story. And when that didn't work, they sent a telegram to your sister to get her out here so they could kidnap her and force you into changing your testimony. That must be it. Well, isn't this murder in jail? Of course. But he could have had someone send that telegram and hold up the stage. Do you have a gun, Mr. Hearn? I think there's an old rifle around here somewhere. Oh, why? Well, if what I think is true, your sister might still be in danger. Good heavens. Do you think those ruffians might come here? They're very apt to. Well, it seems to me I saw that rifle back here. Ah! Yes, I've been meaning to get this fixed. It rolls up every time someone walks by. Uh, there. Forgive me, Mr. Cassidy. I, I didn't mean to throw myself at you like that. It's my pleasure, Miss Matilda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, be sure and use that thing if you have to. In the meantime, I'll go over and have a talk with the sheriff. I'll see you later. Yeah, here's Cassidy now. All right. All right. How long have you been around here? Ever since Winters was killed. How long ago was that? Constable Tom Gorham seemed nervous and unassured of himself in his new job. He was pretty upset when I told him Heron's theory that Breck was responsible for the attempted kidnapping. He couldn't have had anything to do with it. He's been right here in jail ever since the killing. And you say uh, Miss Heron can't even identify the hold of men? No, she can't. But I'd still like to talk to Breck if you don't mind. I don't mind. I just don't see what good it would do. There he is. Help yourself. Red, you better go out and keep an eye on Sam and Matilda, huh? Sure. 
plan was beginning to shape up in my mind, and talking to Breck was part of it. He was a hard-bitten thug with the disposition of a rattlesnake. But he didn't impress me as being any too smart. In fact, I began to wonder how he'd figured out the plan to silence Sam by kidnapping his sister. Naturally, he denied sending any telegram or the attempt to snatch Matilda. He even had a few words of advice for me. I don't know why you're butting in, Cassidy. But if you're smart, you'll mind your own business. Seeing a killer brought to justice is everybody's business. I ain't no killer. I was framed. Oh, sure. Respectable school teachers always go around framing people like you. Get this guy out of here. There's no law says I gotta talk to him. I told you it wouldn't do you any good, Cassidy. I'm afraid you're right. I'll see you in court, Breck. I think the sooner we get Miss Heron back to Kansas City, the better. She'll never be safe around here. I think so, too, but uh, next stage doesn't leave until day after tomorrow. Oh, but too many things can happen between now and then. If she drives over to Weston this afternoon, she can get the stage from there. Good idea. One of my boys could drive her over. Oh, that won't be necessary. She knows this country better than we do. I'll go over and get her started right away. You heard that, didn't you? I'm not deaf. Come in here, you two. What's up, boss? I'm going to give you two a chance to make up for that job you botched this morning. Cassidy was just here, and Miss Heron is... I told the Herons and read what had happened in town. Matilda couldn't understand why Tom Gorham couldn't offer some protection. Sam explained that Gorham was new on the job. I think the only way to protect Miss Matilda is to jail Brex henchman. And the way to do that is to give him another chance to kidnap her. A trap. That's right. Are you suggesting that Maddie be used as bait for these criminals? No, not Matilda. Someone disguised as her. Hey, that's a great idea. I'm glad you like it. Sure, Miss Matilda will be safe enough. Why, we can, uh, we can, uh, we get some clothes, we can, uh, we can... Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? If you think I'm going to dress up in woman's clothes, you're crazy. I thought you liked the idea. Well, it did to begin with. I, uh, I, uh, I, I... You're not going to fast talk me into wearing woman's clothes. I won't do it. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't do it. Oh, Hoppy. The boys ever see me in this rig, I'll have to shoot myself. <clears throat> Stop squirming, Mr. Connors. I'm trying to sew. I'm sorry, ma'am, but it's awful tight. You'll get used to it. I ain't going to wear it long enough to get used to it. There. I'm afraid I've made the skirt too long. Uh, let's see you walk around. I can't even breathe. What makes you think I can walk? Well, try it anyway. you break anything, honey? Oh, I'm all right. I don't know about this outfit. <laughs> oh, well, it's held together all right, but for goodness sake, be more careful in the future. Take smaller steps and don't swing your arms so much. Look, lady, I agree to wear this rig, but I'll be doggone if I'm going to learn manners to go with it. Well, the buckboard's ready, so we might as well get started. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And one more word out of you and the deal's all off. <laughs> <laughs> Red, you better get started. And remember, I'll be there for the kidnapping. Yes, and remember to hold your skirts up so that you don't trip on them again. Now, good luck. Oh, anything you say. Not that high. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Uh, my arm. What's the matter with it? Normally, I would escort my sister to a carriage. Just slip your hand through my arm. Oh, of course, brother dear. Let us be off. <laughs> oh, my purse. She is. Be careful, sis. Be careful. Don't trip. 
You're clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Skirts. Goodbye, sis. Be careful. Bye bye. Don't forget to write, sis. Bye bye. What a break. You're making the trip by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Well, he's on his way. Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> Now, Matilda, I want you to please keep out of sight until I get back. Will you see that she does that, Sam? Gone far enough. You're coming with us, and this time, no funny business. Get your hands up, both of you. All right, drop your guns in the wagon. Cassidy. Nasty surprise, eh, boys? Why, you dirty, uh, dirty... Uh, watch the language. I'll forget I'm a lady. <laughs> nice going, Matilda. <laughs> All right, you two, turn around and head back to town. I got a few questions I want to ask you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Who is it? Tom Gorham. Tom. How are you, Sam? What? Oh, excuse the rifle, but I didn't want to take any chances. Uh, come on in. <laughs> come on out, Maddie. It's only the constable. Your sister? I thought she left for Weston. Oh, that was just a trick. Maddie, I'd like you to meet Constable Gorham. How do you do? I know you, ma'am. 
What trick? Well, Mr. Cassidy figured that Breck's thugs would try to keep Mattie from reaching Weston. So we sent Mr. Connors Mattie's place, dressed in her clothes. And Mr. Cassidy followed them at a distance, so if those ruffians try anything, they'll be sorry. Smart plan, wasn't it? Yeah, very smart. When did they leave? An hour ago. Tom, I don't know what we'd have done without Mr. Cassidy. And don't forget Mr. Connors. Oh, he made a great sacrifice. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness, you should have seen him. He was the strangest looking female you ever saw. <laughs> Stay where you are. What? You two don't do exactly as I say, I'll kill you. Samuel! Are you out of your mind? If it hadn't been for your friend Cassidy trying to be so smart, this wouldn't have happened. Now get over there. You're in league with Breck. That's right. You try to warn Cassidy, I'll shoot. Hey, Red, pull up. It looks like the constable's horse. No use going on into town. Get off your horses. He's in with Breck. He had a gun in on us. I'll do the talk and drop your guns. So you've been in with Breck all along, huh? That's right. Too bad you didn't find it out sooner. I hired Breck to kill Winters. Unfortunately, Sam was a witness. So I had to put Breck in jail to keep the folks from getting suspicious. But now Sam will change his story. And I'll run this town exactly the way I want. How about me and Harvey? We're taking you in the Badlands where you'll disappear. Just how do you figure on doing that? Take him. Matilda? I'm just fine. You know, this is the first fight I was ever in, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have enjoyed it if Mr. Cassidy hadn't made Gorham make the first move. <laughs> Did you know that blind was going up? I didn't think Sam had had time to fix it yet. <laughs> ah, let's get him tied up and get him out of here. You have got a rope, Sam? Yeah. Come on, get on your feet. Yeah. Sam, I think your troubles are all over now. Good luck to you. We'll never be able to thank you and Red for all you've done for us. Oh, shucks, that weren't nothing. Oh, don't say that. Both of you were wonderful. And Mr. Cassidy. I know I'm an old fool, but I wonder if you'd mind terribly if, if I kissed you. Why, certainly not, Miss Matilda. <laughs> there, now, I, I feel a lot better. The pleasure was all mine, Miss Matilda. Goodbye, Red. <laughs> Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye. Goodbye, Matilda. Good luck to you. Goodbye. 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 Hi there. You know there are certain laws that are made to protect all of us, but we must do something to help about that protection. Well, here's a thought that might help prevent an accident. 
help other people protect you. Now, to make it a little easier for you to remember those words, the first letter of each of those words spell the name of a man who thinks you're pretty wonderful and who doesn't want you to be hurt. So till next week, so long. In the meantime, be careful, won't you? There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys raised. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. He'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then.